let us not reduce the fight of Indians as a whole against militancy and rise in terrorism to the question of a sectarian, insular, you know, exclusivist sort of a narrative of putting it between two religious communities. The only narrative is 80-20, Shamshan Ghat and Yokovaristan, or bulldozers at political rallies. Since that period of time, the number of Kashmiri pundits who lost their lives is 89. And the number of uh, people who lost their lives from other faiths is 1635. Hello and welcome to HD's weekly talk show, The Interview. Go in to watch the film as an Indian and come out as a Hindu or a Muslim. This is the crux of the controversial film, The Kashmir Files. The government has endorsed it, while critics say it weaponizes the pain of the Kashmiri pundits. We bring you a two-part series on the film. In the first, we speak to CPM General Secretary and well-known politician, Sita Ram Yachuri, and in the second, to A.S. Dullat, formerly Secretary Raw and Jammu and Kashmir advisor in the Prime Minister's office for four years. Beginning this week, we have with us Sita Ram Yachuri, who has spoken of the dangers of peddling half-truths. Welcome to the show, Mr. Yachuri, and thank you for being with us. Thank you, thank you. You, like many sensible people, have yes. slammed the film Kashmir Files. Take me through the reasons. And like Dr. Farooq Abdullah, would you call it a propaganda film? First of all, <clears throat> what is this whole film about? It's about the rise of militancy in the decade of the 1990s in Jammu and Kashmir, particularly in the Kashmir Valley, and the loss of innocent lives. Now, my party, the CPIM, has been in the forefront of condemning this. Actually, this militancy upswing begins in 89. And there was a list of seven people that was prepared to be assaulted, which included our leader, the Muhammad Yusuf Tarigami. And he was assaulted in December 1989. An election rally of ours that was held way later in 90s, 1996, was attacked and seven people were killed. So we have been victims of this militancy as much as anybody else. And anybody else includes the Hindus, the Muslims mainly there in terms of the numbers and in the six, apart of course from the Kashmiri Pandits. The first of the victims of terrorist attack was one Muhammad Yusuf Halwai, a national conference member. He was the first to be killed. A Muslim, the Mirwais Kashmir, the elder Mirwais Kashmir, he was shot there and his funeral procession was attacked, killing scores of uh, people at that point of time. So, I mean, this has a certain history of all this. To isolate only one aspect out of it, I think is doing complete disservice to the entire history and the fight put up by United Leader, the people of Kashmir, in resisting this militancy. That is why this film, by picking up a certain aspect, it actually fits in to the to, to the entire game plan of the Hindutva forces to rouse the feeling between Hindus and Muslims and not between Indians and militancy. The fight is against militancy, which is actually attacking our country as a whole, all sets of people. Instead of that broad-based uh, narrative that needs to be strengthened, you have this sectarian you know, an insular thing, which is clearly aimed at at consolidating a particular vote bank. So let us not reduce the fight of Indians as a whole against militancy and rise in terrorism to the question of a sectarian, insular, you know, exclusivist sort of a narrative of putting it between two religious communities. I think that is the biggest disservice we are doing to India. So therefore, you see a pattern in this, like many people do, and a deliberate attempt to peddle half-truth. Absolutely, absolutely. And in fact, I think the whole truth has to come, I mean, it has come out. It's not that it isn't. 
the people who were in charge of our intelligence agencies, the RAW and the IB then, and the chiefs of that have gone on record recently. Mr. Dulat has gone on record recently. And he said, I will not see the film because it's a propaganda film. So, so you see, a lot of well-meaning people today see the fight between Indians and India against militancy being reduced to a political agenda, to further a political point of view. So would you say what <clears throat> many say that the BJP or the Hindutva forces have used creative people in Bollywood and of course they have agreed to crawl when they were asked to bend. Well, it is up to those people who made this film to answer that question. But the question is the Bollywood has made extremely, extremely powerful secular films. I mean, I mean, it, their films, at least when we were growing up our generation, that molded our consciousness to actually think of India as India, irrespective of which religion or caste or region that you belong to. Now, I mean, if a section of the Bollywood is doing this, and I don't think it's Bollywood as a whole. So you feel this is an aberration? Well, as Bollywood in general, I would say it's an aberration because I still have faith and I have complete faith in our artists in Bollywood. And I think they have played a very, very reasonably good role so far in cementing what the idea of India is all about rather than in disrupting it. Exactly. So this film actually goes against that spirit. Yes, it does. In a sense, from what what can be heard about it. Once I heard the narrative, I thought it was best to, to actually stick to the historical facts and the reality. I'll go by what is the facts. What about completely leaving out Muslims? Their children were orphaned and women were widowed. So isn't this a one-sided portrayal to spread hatred? Of course. I mean, you see, this is a point that has been confirmed as late as December 2021 by the office of the superintendent of police of Kashmir. In an official letterhead, in a reply to the RTI, he says, since militancy began, they dated from 1990. Since that period of time, the number of Kashmiri pundits who lost their lives is 89. And the number of uh, people who lost their lives from other faiths is 1635, bulk of them being Muslims. The filmmaker has been accused of exhibiting communalism, manipulating facts, and as I said, spread hatred. Would you agree with that? Well, it's contributing to all these elements. The film as it is, is contributing to deepening communal polarization. And deepening communal polarization necessarily is accompanied by hatred and, and violence. Hopefully, it, it shouldn't happen. I hope it, uh, it does not happen. And it is not as though to bracket people saying who is supporting, who is opposing. Everybody is supporting India. India has to be supported. Not this element or that element of India. But India as a whole needs to be supported. And that is where our future lies. And it's so simple as that. I mean, that, that I don't know why some people don't want to see the truth. And this film, if I may say so, and as many have seen, is promoting not India, not Indianness, but Hindutva. That's it. And that is why it is now actually a Hindutva nationalism versus Indian nationhood. You know, that is that is what is it's emerging from this film. It's most unfortunate. You know, it was aptly said, one goes in as an Indian to see the film but comes out as a Hindu or a Muslim. Do you agree with this perception? It appears from all the new, I mean, uh, the new stories that we hear and all the emotional uh, <clears throat> chants that are emerging and from the people's reactions. And that is very, very unfortunate. Instead of uniting everybody who's watching the film, it is actually dividing them. What do you make of the BJP and the government backing the film? The Prime Minister has endorsed it. BJP state governments have granted tax exemptions. Do you think there is more than meets the eye? Well, it, it, it looks like it. I mean, I've not seen, I mean, normally somebody, no prime minister advertising a film. I mean, you, you can have prime ministers liking a film, some of it, I mean, perfectly natural and normal. You can have prime ministers actually shedding tears when they hear a particular song 
like Lata Mangeshkar's rendition, Hey Mere Vatan Ke Logo in the 1960s. Th these are perfectly normal reactions. But to advertise a film, urging people to go and see the film. You said that it is quite normal for prime ministers to shed a tear. You said it is quite normal for them to like a film. But there have not been instances where prime ministers have endorsed a film. But then you would agree that Mr. Narendra Modi is a prime minister with a difference. Well, it is, of course, with a difference. He's not really endorsed, but he's advertising the film. You know, there is a view, and many agree with this, that the film is sponsored by the BJP, and there is a hidden hand, quote, unquote, and subservient elements in Bollywood have been used to further a political agenda. Well, whether they've been used, whether there's been a hand behind it or not, look at it objectively as I'm saying. I'm not going into these uh, conspiracy theories. Objectively, it is actually dividing the people in our country, emotionally surcharged division, which is not in the interest of India. Please, we need to put out the entire story of that unfortunate decade in Kashmir. The entire story that begins with the killing of prominent Muslim leaders and which also includes our leaders of our parties, including Sikhs and Hindus and Kashmiri Pandits and the others. So it was a unified fight that was required against this militancy, which is what put, what's put up, which is what was put up. And that is why you could contain it at the, after, after some uh, period of unfortunate losses. But instead of that, if you try to create a sectarian divide between the people, I don't think that is in the long-term interest. And I'm sure it's not in the long-term interest of our country, our unity, and the integrity of our country as well as the people. So would you say it is BJP sponsored? Well, I wouldn't. Uh, I, I wouldn't. I mean, it serves the, their politics, definitely. Whether it's actually sponsored or not, I mean, that is... Something, as far as I'm concerned, it may not be material at all, but as long as it serves that, that narrative, it serves that narrative, then, then that, that is what is happening, which is, again, not in the interest of India as we know of it today. Let me quote two politicians and get your views on what they have said. Dr. Farooq Abdullah, by making the movie tax-free, the government is penetrating hatred into people's hearts. And then Mehbooba Mufti, who has said that BJP is weaponizing the pain of the Kashmiri pundits. And this makes its ill intentions obvious. Where Farooq Sahib have been talking, I think when he says the exemption of the entertainment tax is actually a patronage being given by the state. I think that's what he means rather than this thing. And yes, I mean, that is clear from, from the Prime Minister downwards who have been urging people to actually go and see this film. The question is, are we in it together as Indians fighting militancy? Or are we divided in saying that let us use this to pit one against the other for generating a narrative that may give political dividend? Would you say that what happened to Kashmiri Pandits was exodus or was it genocide as the film says or claims it was? What would you say well, to that? Well, look at the circumstances. It was said by the then governor, <coughs> governor saying that it would be difficult to protect for some time, move out of the valley, so that once we restore normalcy, then you could return. That is how the exit began. Now, if that is the way the exit began, which is what historical facts show, that if that is how the exit began, then what would you call it? I mean, it's called a migration out because of the situation. And not genocide, as the film says. No, I, I don't understand what is that genocidal element. Why would they move out then? Why would they allow to be moved out? Genocides happen when they are not allowed to escape. But here, I mean, you know, they moved out and at the advice of the, of the authorities saying that we'll restore normalcy and then you return. But when the normalcy was restored, was the return happening? Why it didn't happen? What were the reasons? What were the reasons for this advice? If you really want to do a proper story on that, all these aspects need to be covered. That did not happen. Mr. Yajuri, 
the film has shown the JNU in a bad light. You have been a student and you are familiar with the university and the goings on. How correct is it that a professor's support to the separatists has been shown and actually they've mixed up the timelines. What has been happening in the JNU recently is something which they pitched 30 years ago. It's actually derogatory <laughs> and, and it is abs factually absolutely wrong. I'm familiar with that period in JNU. I don't recollect anybody in JNU actually supporting the militancy in the valley or the militancy. On the contrary, there are scores of Kashmiri pundits who came to JNU as students, as faculty, and who joined there, who continued to remain there and retired there with distinction. And they, they, they've done an enormous amount of significant work in terms of research, in terms of teaching. And JNU was a, a welcoming house for, for such funders to come and work, I mean, without any feeling of being discriminated against. So I think, again, this fits into the political narrative they want to create, and which is, which is, which is the part of the political narrative that the whole film speaks about. Before I come to 2024, let me ask you just two quick questions on the film. About Omar Abdullah saying, when Kashmiri Pandits left the valley, his father, uh, Dr. Farooq Abdullah, was not the chief minister. And it was VP Singh government at the center, supported by the BJP. And this fact has been conveniently distorted in the film. Well, if it has, it has, it is, it is a fact. What Omar has uh, stated when the, so when the migration began, Farooq Saab was not the chief minister. And when uh, he had already resigned before that much, <clears throat> before that. And then it is also a fact, it was a VP Singh government that was also supported from the outside by the BJP and by the left. And therefore the BJP was not part of the government because the left, left would not have supported them. So the, in, in that situation, that is also a historical fact. So, so both these facts were over as they stated are historic, historically correct. Conveniently not, ignored in the film terrible. or distorted. I know, and it's not only these, there are many other issues, like I pointed out, that are, that are not involved in the film, that are not discussed in the film, which gives the larger holistic picture of the attack by the militancy. And also the question that needs to be answered sometime, if not now, and are people in the agencies who are now retired, when you must be I mean, they must be brought in to share their experiences. Why and how in the 90s the militancy rose to this pitch? What were the factors that contributed to it at that point of time? All of these aspects are completely missing. So the sum total is that this is a presentation in its crudest form with the objective to turn tragedy into masala. Well, I wouldn't say masala, but I would say it is to turn agony and tragedy into fitting a political narrative. I can't let you go without asking at least one political question, which is looking ahead at 2024. What does the future hold? And does it seem that the BJP is unstoppable, like it has demonstrated in the recently concluded assembly elections? Well, uh, it is clear now that by using the instruments of the state power, which because of its control over the government, they are advancing the agenda of the Hindu Raj. Now this is, a, this requires the undermining of the secular democratic constitution, the character of the Republic and the institutions independent institutions established by a constitution to act as checks and balances to correct the the, uh, the excesses that may be committed by the executive in the functioning and implementation of our constitution. Now all these institutions are being undermined and along with this is the, the, the whole, whole absence of any concern for the actual livelihood conditions of our people. The only narrative is 80-20, 
Shamshan Ghat or and Yakovaristan or bulldozers at political rallies or I mean all these sort of narratives that are being been brought forward by the film. No, what is it that governance means? That is something is a very, very important question that is arising and which will be an important element in the 2024 elections. So therefore, what is actually required for the sake of safeguarding Indian constitution, safeguarding the character of our republic and for the welfare of our people is actually to work to make ensure that the BJP does not continue to control the reins of the government that can be misused for pursuing its agenda. So if that needs to be done, the broadest front of all secular forces needs to be built at every state level. There are different parties, mainly regional parties in many states, which are the dominant parties. Under their leadership, you will have the coming together of all secular forces, like it happened in Tamil Nadu in the last assembly election, coming together of these secular forces to order to maximize, maximize the pooling of anti-BJP vote, and it's on the basis of this maximization of this vote that post-election, these numbers will decide the character and who will lead the alternative front, which will form the alternative government. You know, Mr. Yachuri, what you say about opposition coming together, etc., etc., sounds very optimistic. But on the ground, this does not seem to show up. It did not in 2019, and it has not in the recently concluded assembly elections. Well, you see, most of the times that is what Indian politics is all about. I remember in 19, uh, uh, in a, it, this was in 2004, in the 2003 and 4 campaign, after the BJP won the four major states in, the, in North India, which normally go to polls before the general elections, all the states when they had won that. And when the campaign of a shining India was raging across the country, when we were arguing, saying, no, the people of our country, the real India is not the shining India. You have the shining India and you have the suffering India and the suffering India will assert. Nobody believed us. Same thing that like you're saying, what well, was actually said, saying that you are, seem to be living in a fool's paradise. I mean, nobody can stop the surge of this, uh, the juggernaut of this uh, you know, shining India. But what happened? It was stopped. You had an alternate government that went on for 10 years. The nature of, of what is Indian uh, politics is diversities. It's, uh, I mean, it's complexities. So I'm sure it may sound very optimistic at this point of time. And you're right. It is sounding a little optimistic when you have this certain degree of disarray, let's say, in the secular parties. I won't dispute that. But then we'll have to work to overcome that, which I'm sure we'll all have, we'll all do the sheer, sheer need and the interest of our country and our people. I wish you all the luck. Mr. Sitaram Yachuri, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you for your time. And thank you for setting the record straight on Kashmir Piles. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.